To master any skill, it requires practice, dedication, and constantly learning mindset. If you are ready to master odd surface modeling, I'm here to help you. So this class is not for absolute beginners. Maybe if you are someone who knows the basics of modeling and willing to upgrade your skill, you can continue watching this class. For those who want to learn the basics of art surface and want to be strong at fundamentals of 3D modeling, check my beginner friendly art surface course. It doesn't require any pay that on, so the link will be in the description. Finish it and get ready to attend this master class. <coughs> Before we get started, let me give a brief overview about our class so that you can anticipate what are the topics we're gonna cover in this video. In this masterclass, I've created 5 stages of modeling. Each stage will increase your skill, level and knowledge in art surface. Stage 1. Creating your own shape. We're creating our own shape and I call this modeling trait. Stage 2. Beginner's mistake. I explain you the mistake you've been doing without even realizing how it skill your model. Stage 3. Understanding detail. I'll teach you about the primary detail and how you can take your model from simple into complex artwork. Stage 4. What should you model? In this stage, I'll break down the secrets of creativity in modeling and how you can model your own ideas in 3D. Stage 5. Teamwork. The gate is open to join our community and helping each other. Let's begin with stage 1. You guess? Yes. It's creating your own shape. This is like a modeling exercise. The more you train, the better you be. This is a fun part. Personally, I enjoy creating complex shapes. Let me share my experience and knowledge with you. Open your Blender software. First, what we need is a base shape, right? We have three options. Square, Cylinder and Sphere. Yeah, there are quite few shapes or exist but most commonly you use these three shapes. I am choose the square because it's easy to make different shape compared to the others. If you want to experience challenging work, you can go with the Sphere. To make it more easy, I just go with the square now. Anyway, now I am going to adjust the size. For me, I would like to make it taller and a little bit wider on Y axis. This is the base shape of my model. But it's but is that looking interesting? Definitely not. The magic is happens in edit mode. Watch carefully. Now I have to think some strategies. I have a lot but for now I'll show one of them. In edit mode, I'm going to add a loop cut at center. Why we doing this? Is because to separate the edge into app. Let me move the loop cut a little bit on top. So now I'm gonna select all four sides of the edges and run a bevel or run a chamfer. Yeah, one segment bevel is called as a chamfer. Now you can see an interesting look at top. Next at the bottom, I'm going to run a bevel as well, but just think about this. If I had a chamfer at bottom, is that looking good? It doesn't right. So add more segments to the bottom to make it more curvy look so that it's represent a curve at bottom and hard at top in this way it represent a clean and visually appealing look okay now we have a dark line surrounding our cube to make it more smoother just select all the edges and run a bevel in case if you're finding any overlapping issue press c while you're performing bevel to highlight the base add a small bevel Maybe same as top as well. This shape is not complex but it's simple and neat. It's more clean, you know what I mean? In this entire process, I have no idea on what I model. I have no reference image, no planning, just playing around with shapes. I don't even know what is this, what its functionality is. But it's just a interesting shape, that's it. What I'm trying to say is the process is not determined. You can't predict how the final model is gonna look like. You start with the block out and building on top of that. Just try your own ideas and think how you can make an interesting shape. It doesn't matter if it's looking good or bad. Your goal is to practice and learn new strategies. Let's test your skill. This is your challenge. Try to bring this model by your own. It's going to be challenging. At the same time, it's going to unleash your hidden creative mind. If you finish the challenge, you are promoted to the next level. Good luck for those who want to give a try. Let's talk about mistakes. Over the past two years, I've significantly improved my modeling skill. Now, I would like to share my experience and the mistake I've made along the way. One common error beginners make is neglecting or don't know how to use bevel. To clarify, Blender offers two types of bevel. They are physical and modified bevels. Physical bevel involves manually smoothing sharp edges in editing mode. A technique most of us know, right? However, the bevel modifier is equally important. Think of it as a highlighter. 
like we use a cavity in we put now let's move on to the best practice rule one never leave sharp lines or edges in your model always build flat lines and add a bevel modifier to highlight edges rule two understand where to add chamfer and fillets in hot surface modeling it's essential to recognize concave and convex bevel concave edges refers to inner edges while convex edges refers to outer edges here's a crucial point when using with concave edges you can safely use segment or chamfer no worries however when dealing with the concave edges chamfers can be a disaster to your model segment bevel or your only option remember this key distinction mistake number 2 not addressing shading problems in your model In my past, I don't know how to fix shading problems in my model. In fact, I'm not even willing to learn how to fix them. I think it's a over complicated task. But once I start fixing them, it's pretty damn easy. So, let's see why the shading problems occurs and how to fix them. One of the common reason is when you perform a difference boolean in a curved surface, it might be give a shading problem. There are two reasons behind this, actually three. The first reason is because of mismatch vertexes. You can see when I go to the edit mode the vertex is not really combined with the cylinder edges. So to fix them, select both vertex and press M on your keyboard and select add first. You need to do this process to all mismatch vertexes from your model. Reason number 2, not enough edge. In this model I have a horizontal edges but I don't have vertical edges. So you can add a loop cut to add a vertical edges but in my case it's not really give me the full loop cut. It's not really cover my full model. So what I can do is just add a knife tool to manually add some lines from my to my model. So press K to uh, enable the knife tool and just manually draw some lines and then run a bevel. This will almost fix 90% of your shading problems from your model. To make it more clean, you can add a weighted normal modifier and enable keep sharp. In case if you have any dark shadows from your model, this will fix that issue. Reason number 3 not calculated edges in blender most of the time the shade smooth is not really calculate the sharp edges we need to mark some edges as manually sharp by going to edge mode and select the edge you want to sharp right click and click mark sharp option this is how you can prevent shading problems from your model the final mistake most beginners makes is stopping the progress and limiting their skill you've learned how to make models in 3d but you didn't try to take it to the next level i would like to share my own experience again After mastering Blender hot surface modeling, I felt comfortable with modeling, lighting and texturing. However, I noticed that my artworks look similar in every project. That makes my work boring. I was modeling the same style instead of trying new things. For example, when creating a cable, I would do it in the same way instead of adding detail or trying new types of cable. I also didn't try subdim modeling, but after learning about subdivision modifier, I realized how easy and fun it was. So don't be afraid to try new styles. This is how you can find your own unique style instead of being the lesser version of other artist. We understand about modeling and the most common mistake which we discuss yearly in this class. But now we want to make our model looks visually appealing. So that's why I'm going to take you to the next stage called detailing. One of the most interesting part in hot surface modeling is adding detail to your model. First you need to understand types of detail. The first detail is called echo detailing. This is a technique used in art surface to create a sense of continuity in the design. It involves repeating or echoing specific details or design elements throughout the model to create visual connection. In summary, we call it as a mirroring symmetric detail. Now, in this model, I'm going to cut the top part by the exact shape. I use box cutter add-on for this. You can use a curved add-on or just add a mesh and just bring it to the model design and then perform a different boolean. This is how you can add a coin detail to your model. It's very useful and adds visual interest to your model. Second type of detail is array detail. Array detailing is another technique used in art surface modeling to create repeating patterns or array of detail on a model surface. Here's a small information about array detailing. This type of detail draws the viewer's focus on the area, make it more engaging for the human eyes. However, it is essential to strike a balance and avoid overdoing it. as too much repetition can be overwhelming the third type of detail is adding of rivets bolts or screw holes i'd like to share a relevant quote here great things are done by a series of small things brought together this perfectly captures the impact of small details like screw holes or bolts 
on a model appearance in final render. Deep cuts will also enhance contrast, playing nicely with lighting. Observe the model before and after adding rivets and bolts. The difference is striking especially in mechanical and sci-fi design. The adding details creates a more authentic industrial look. The last type of detailing is called label or decal detailing. This detailing in Blender refers to the process of adding texture or image onto a 3D model without modifying its geometry. Basically, we add some logo, text or decals to our model to bring visual interest. There are several ways to add decals to your model. First, you can purchase decal machine add-on and install to your Blender. This add-on provides details like trim sheet, decal packs and logo or text label. Pretty much everything you need. The second option is you can install Kitab's free mini pack. If you are someone who literally broken and seeking for a free option, this one is for you. In this Kitops mini pack, you have some limited decals, especially labels. Third option is manually adding text and project to your model using Shrinkwrap modifier. One of the greatest thing is you can download your favorite font and use it in your blender. The last option is also a free add-on called import as decal. This add-on will import your image as a decal. So yeah, here's your four options to add decal detail to your model. Comment down which one you are going to use. In this stage, I'll teach you how to model and take inspiration from other artists. First of all, you need to clarify your mind. Ask this question to yourself. What is your concept is going to be? Is it a weapon, building or the sci-fi related? And what is the style? If it's a simple plain background or the environmental background. Once you clear with that, you can start gathering reference image. For example, I would like to model a sci-fi building and the background is going to be something environmental, maybe a desert mountain background. So this is my concept. Now I'm going to gather some reference image online. You can gather reference image from Google Images or ArtStation or even use an AI to generate image for your reference. So the first two option is most people can know about that, right? But implementing AI to your model would be more effective. Just find any AI you are comfortable with. It does not matter what kind of AI you are using, just find anyone and just describe your ideas and generate image from the AI. You just need to collect 4 to 5 images. Once you all done that, now it's time to blend them all into a one. First what you need to do is, take a, some portion of a highlight from the images. For example, in this images, the background is insane, so I just take the inspiration from the background. And from the second image, I like the architecture of the building. I like the sci-fi lightings, so I only gather the buildings from this image. You need to gather 4 to 5 images and then take some portion of highlight or the thing you really liked in that image and then blend them all into a one. When you do this, the final result is going to be something more unique. So just keep practicing this and finally you have ability to create your own ideas. Stage 5 Teamwork Ready to level up your modeling skill and connected with like-minded creators. Join our Discord community right now and become a part of growing tribe. Click the link below to enter the world of knowledge sharing, skill swapping and collaborative growth. Our community is still evolving, but one thing is for sure, together we'll push the boundaries of what's possible in art surface modeling. Share your expertise, ask questions and learn from others. I'll be sharing some educational tips and tricks and I know you got some secret up your sleeves too. So what are you waiting for? Join the conversation, let's build something amazing together.